So you may have noticed I've done a couple of videos on apps. Putting apps and cassette decks and other audio equipment together is a good idea because apps are now available. You can do some pretty impressive stuff with your cassette deck and your hi-fi system. And it, sometimes it's just all you need is, a, it is an indicator that something's going to happen or is happening. And that's where these apps come in. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you, we've done two lots of videos. The first one was just showing you how to use the one kilohertz tone. This one is going to be showing you something a little bit more impressive than that. The second one was how to use twin tones. Well, that one's also pretty good. What we're going to look at today is ones that take these signals in so you can tell what the signals are doing, i.e. you play back a tape and you see if it's any good. Let's get stuck into it. Nice and simple. Keep it simple. Any questions, anything that you want to find out, then you know, put a message in the in the comments below. And uh, if you're finding these of any use, maybe you'd like to subscribe. Let's get stuck into the video now. Coming up first, this is my Android phone, and you can see this is the one that I find is the most useful. We'll cover that one later. This one is the second most useful. This one's quite interesting. We'll start with the interesting one first, then, shall we? What we have here is a harmonicity meter from the same people who made the function generator Quelly Soft or something. Anyway, it's uh, available on Android. It's rather a useful thing because it gives you more than one sort of figure. You, basically, you just feed in the signal from its microphone and it will give you the frequency. It will give you a readout of what the frequency looks like down the bottom and it will give you a the jitter and the shimmer. Those figures are not something you'd normally associate with having audio equipment, but it is something you would have with instruments. Jitter is deviation from the frequency and shimmer is deviation from the amplitude, both of which are useful if you're doing tapes. This jitter is the equivalent of wow flutter. Well, it won't give you a figure that you can actually can, that you can use to measure with, but what it does do is it gives you an indication that there's a problem. And if you compare it to an original, or a bit different deck, you know that you've got more or less problems than you had before. The readout gives it as a percentage, so there must be an equivalence factor there somewhere. A musician friend of mine was trying to play back something and he couldn't work out what the note was, so he used this and it told him what the note was. It gives a frequency readout and it's quite useful for that, and it also gives harmonic distortions, and because that's interesting for musicians. The only problem with this is it's only for low, relatively low frequencies, but if you're just looking for purity, it's a way of monitoring it. Here it is working and you can see it's giving a display there. That was actually me just blowing a whistle, sort of, as in whistling, going <laughs> So that's a good impression of me doing that. But you can see how it was responding and the sort of figures you were getting on it. So it's quite a useful piece of kit in that respect. I like it. I think it's got a lot more potential than some people would give it credit for because of the, the fact that it gives you the visual display there in the blue of what the actual sound looks like. That's a sort of a spectrum, a spectral analysis. And then you look at the very bottom, you can see what looks like a normal audacity trace, which is the amplitude of the signal. So overall, it's quite useful. you just got to find a use for it. But uh, you can use it for speed checking. You can use it for purity all around about the one or two kilohertz. On to this one, which is a frequency counter. Again, it's by Quellisoft. And it's very useful because... It's quite sophisticated in actual fact. It gives you a visual display of the amplitude and it also gives you the ability to gate it and various other things. Now, if you don't know what that means, that's fine. But if essentially, if you just point it at what you want to listen to, it gives you the readout. And if you're trying to do something like azimuth or whatever, it will, you, you can use that to find out when you're at the right point because it will be when it's the loudest and loudest means, of course, that it's at the peak. So you can actually see what you're looking at and you can see the numbers. It's not as easy to use as a harmonicity, but it is more flexible if you know what you're doing with it. Got one more to look at before we look at the best one. This is the oscilloscope. This oscilloscope is really an approximation of what we would use in the workshops called an oscilloscope. And you can see here it has the ability to give you the shape of waves and the height of waves and the frequency of waves. You just could use, if you know how to do a little bit of maths, this is what we were all brought up on as techs, how to read these displays. Well, 
it's not that difficult, but it does do a very good job. This again was just me whistling at the thing, and you can see how it gives you the different uh, shapes and sizes and all the rest of it. If you're interested in how to read an oscilloscope, then put comments in the comments and uh, ask the questions, and I'll see if I can do a video on it. I've got a proper scope, and I can also do it on this as well. And finally, the most useful one for cassette decks ever. Before we do that, I just want to show you this. This is a TRRS lead with three RCA plugs on it, and this is an attenuator. And if you use these with these apps, it makes them very much more useful because you can override the microphone to have direct electrical connection. That's where this comes in. You can reduce the output from whatever you're measuring down to microphone level, which will then go into the phone or tablet and will give you a proper reading if that's the way your particular app and your particular phone combination work. If you'd like to know how to make one of these, put a comment and uh, I'll try and get back to you. And so finally, on to one of the most useful apps you can have for audio. This one is rather amazing. I have used it to detect duff motors in fridges. I have used it to detect a whistling power supply. I have used it to detect all sorts of sounds. It's amazing what you can do. You just need to apply a bit of sideways out of the box thinking and hey presto you got something useful it's also very useful for what it was originally designed for which is to look at the frequency spectrum and if you've got a reasonable phone and i haven't i've got a very cheap phone but if you've got a phone that is capable of running this you will find it's very very useful the trace you see here was basically a quiet room and that's the way it comes up that little hump around about the 14 and a half kilohertz that's the thing of my phone but it doesn't really matter because you know it's there so you just ignore it if you use a direct connection with that lead that I was showing you earlier on, you don't get that. You get a much more linear response. This is me whistling the one kilohertz again. Now you see there's a play button on the top right hand side. That means you can actually record what's on the screen, which is how I'm showing you this. And you can see there's actually harmonics on my one kilohertz. I thought that's pretty accurate actually, the way I actually managed to get that, but it proves it's hard to whistle a pure tone. And this shows you what you can do when you want to do it properly. I think this one's the more interesting trace. As you can see, apps are very adaptable, and if you've got the, the, the thinking process to be able to use them, they're very, very useful. Most of the time, you only want to know if there's a signal there or not, and you don't have to know whether it's down to the last dB. That's for the experts when they're doing calibration. All we want to do is make sure it's working. Keep it simple. Gary, keep it simple. I'm here for you. And if you've got some value out of this, please like, subscribe, share it around, get the word out there. Thanks. Bye-bye.